we go. If we can get through this, it's all cream cheese. The YSU faculty strike ends, why energy storage is key to America's future, and we're going inside this year's local production of Living Dead the Musical. This is The Daily Buzz. Hello everyone, welcome to The Daily Buzz. I'm Mike Moliterno and happy Thursday to everyone. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on the news today because it is Thursday, which means after hours report. And in this week's report, we're diving into Living Dead the Musical. So we're going to get to the zombies as fast as we can because I know you all love zombies. Maybe even a little too much. I mean, come on, how is The Walking Dead still on TV? Don't get me wrong, I was a big fan until Rick went and started a fight he couldn't finish with Negan. And don't get me started on how annoying that guy is. But seriously, how is that show still a thing? Could it be any more ironic that a show that hasn't been truly alive for the better part of a decade is called The Walking Dead? And apparently Fear the Walking Dead is still on too? Might as well call it Bored with the Walking Dead. Fortunately, Living Dead the Musical has nothing to do with The Walking Dead. It's more about the George Romero Living Dead series, which means, now that I think about it, this whole rant has been for nothing. Hmm. The YSU strike is over. In a statement released early this morning, YSU announced it had reached an agreement with the faculty union, though details were not released. Be sure to check back to our website for further developments. Yesterday, Bright Energy Innovators held its Ohio Next Energy Summit at its offices in downtown Warren. During the event, keynote speaker Alex Fitzsimmons, Deputy Assistant Secretary at the Department of Energy, told the audience that the future competitiveness of the U.S. depends on innovation, particularly when it comes to energy storage. There's a huge opportunity to get involved in the energy storage market, but that's not just on the transportation side, although that's what's driving EV battery deployment in the short term. There's also grid scale battery storage. And so a lot of people are, are looking at you, uh, deploying lithium ion technology on the grid. But beyond lithium ion technology, we're going to need other forms of storage that are better at long duration. You can read more from the summit in the story and you can hear more from Fitzsimmons in the three minutes with video on our website. A big shout out to the Boardman Civic Association. This year, due to the pandemic, the Civic Association will be streaming its annual awards dinner, which will take place October 19th at 5.30 p.m. You can see the full list of award winners in the story on our website. Also a big shout out to Armstrong, who just wrapped up their third Avenge Hunger Month. Through September, Armstrong and its employees, customers, and partners donated more than 16,000 pounds of food and raised more than $17,600 for Second Harvest Food Bank. You can help Armstrong fight hunger by taking part in their year-round Breaking Bread initiative. Throughout the year, Armstrong will accept donations of food or money from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at its offices on Woodworth Road in North Lima. Well, as I said, it is Thursday, so it is time for the zombies. And as promised, here's Maggie Young with this week's After Hours Report. The pandemic won't stop the Rust Belt Theater Company from bringing back their annual Halloween show. Stick around and we'll tell you all about it in this week's After Hours Report. Hello and welcome to the After Hours Report. I'm Maggie Young and Halloween weekend is just around the corner. While there won't be many spooky events to attend this year, the Rust Belt Theater Company is bringing back a Youngstown Halloween tradition for its ninth year. Living Dead the Musical. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I think you'll just stop. Oh, you can't go up on. They're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> it's a crazy one, you know, with everything going on. We made the decision to uh, move forward with the show, but we're doing everything we can to keep our actors and our audience safe. And that's why this year, director Josh Fleming says Living Dead the Musical will be a virtual production. So we've decided to uh, pull a Hamilton and pro shot the show. Uh, we're going to have a private performance for um, a small audience. So we get some laughter and stuff in the background, but we're going to record it and then make it available to the public for donation online on YouTube. I have never done film before. So doing live theater for a camera is very interesting. It'll be cool when you like filming and um, it'll be different, but it'll be like, it'll be fun. Three, two, one. It's just a typical day 
near the western PA and the sun is shining and the sky is a balmy gray. This time around, nearly the whole cast is new to the show, including 13-year-old Helena Bakeris, who plays the role of Karen Cooper. They're trying to survive um, from a bunch of deadly zombies and they're all in the basement and uh, Karen gets um, bitten by a zombie and ends up getting very sick and at the end Karen does turn into a zombie. Also new to the cast this year is Amelia Sharon who will be starring as the show's 10th Barbara. <laughs> Living Dead the Musical is based off of the 1968 original uh, Living Dead movie and I grew up watching that movie, I grew up watching all zombie movies, I'm a big horror film fanatic, so I was really excited when I was finally home and able to audition and land the role of Barbara. Um, she is the oblivious blonde who is happy-go-lucky until everything is just kind of ripped away from her and then she's just put into this disassociative state of shock. When I was a little girl, mom and dad would tuck me into bed at night, then I'd get up once they were gone, and i turn the TV on. My number one job as the director this year is to keep my actors safe. So we started very early um, and we spread out rehearsals where I'd only have one or two people in this room and it's a rather large room so we could social distance safely. Uh, wearing masks, temperatures were taken, I was constantly um, checking that and then also communication I think is the number one thing to do right now. It's, I mean, it's different like taking temperature checks and wearing masks but I am like very thankful that we could still do it, you know, through a pandemic. The rehearsal process, I have never felt more safe uh, during the time of the pandemic since March. There have been times where I've been afraid of going grocery shopping, of leaving my own home, and never in my life did I think, like even back in March, that I would be able to do a show during this time. And they make me feel comfortable, they make me feel safe. Each year the show changes, adding new material, and this year is no different. The main thing this year, uh, because it's our ninth year, I actually pulled some stuff I had planned for uh, the tenth year. So the set got a facelift. There are new props and costumes that we've uh, accumulated over the year to now. Um, we do have a new song, which is going to be super fun for the cast to learn, and it kind of kind of touches what's going on now. If you'd like to stream the show on Halloween weekend, make a minimum donation of $5 to the Rust Belt Theater Company. You can find all the details for how to do that by visiting the Living Dead the Musical event Facebook page. And we will send you a private link on email from our, our, our Rust Belt email. And on the 30th, on 8 p.m. at Easter Standard Time, uh, the show will be available for you to watch. You'll be able to view the show until November 1st. Well, the Rust Belt Theatre Company, uh, we focus on primarily locally written work and we mostly stabilize and survive off ticket sales. So right now, we can't have a lot of people in, our, in the theatre. So we're going to try to keep our doors open and continue evolving with theatre as this pandemic continues. So this is how we are, are remaining afloat. So if you love us, if you want to eventually come back and return to us to have us here, come watch Living Dead. It's Halloween, and that it's. I mean, that's good to watch on Halloween. Uh, it'll that'll be fun, and people I will enjoy this. Thank you, everyone who has participated in this endeavor and who believe in the Rust Belt Theater to truly make this happen. We couldn't have done anything without you, and we appreciate your never-ending support. So, if you go onto the link and you watch our show, please. Remember, donate, keep theater alive, keep theater going with safety, support, and generosity. Happy Halloween. <laughs>
So grab yourself a huge bowl of candy and pig out while you watch Living Dead the Musical right from the comfort of your home. As always, be sure to visit AfterHoursYoungstown.com for all the latest entertainment news and to learn what events are coming up in the rest of October and beyond. Don't forget to sign up for our weekly Entertainment Digest email by clicking subscribe at the top of the page. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's After Hours Report. Stay safe out there and I will see you all next week. Built for the 21st century American workforce, Eastern Gateway Community College has two campuses and is a national leader in online learning. EGCC.edu is a digital gateway where 30,000 students are quickly transforming their financial futures through degrees, certificates, transferable credits, and higher paying jobs. And now, residents of the Mahoning Valley can enroll in summer classes for free. It's the EGCC Summer Guarantee. Eastern Gateway, America's new workforce starts here. And that is going to do it for today's Daily Buzz. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. If you'd like to dive deeper into any of these stories, the links are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mike Moliterno, who just wrapped up their third Avenge Hunger Month. That's what it is, Avenge Hunger. Man, that sounds aggressive. Seven Seventeen Credit Union is paying it forward because we care about our business community. We are offering six months of free ACH and domestic wire services through small business payments when you open a free e-business checking account. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, we are here for your business.